This is our lesson number 67 in Sapphire Kingdom Gemology YouTube channel. In this YouTube channel, we are forwarding the important details regarding the gemology. So you need to understand well to do the gem business properly. So in here, how to get gemstone colors by, this is the lesson, how to get gemstone colors by prioritizing a timely need, timely need. I thought this is the lesson I need to join to YouTube next. Let's start learning. Our topic is how gemstones get colors. This is most important part. In science, you have learned, I think earlier, this is a table in science. The name of this is periodic table. In this periodic table, look at the points I am mentioning. This is the first group and the second group here. Then this is the third group. Vertical groups. This is Fourth one, fifth one, not six, fifth one, sixth one, seventh one, and the eighth one. So there are vertical eight columns. After that, the first row is only two hydrogen and helium. Horizontal row, first row is this row. It is included only two, two elements. And the second row, this is the second row, including only eight elements. First row, two elements. Second row, eight elements. Third row, also eight elements. Two, eight, eight. The fourth row is 18 elements. Fifth, not 18. When we are moving to more down, the yellow color group is here. Yellow color group is continuing after 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, up to 71 here. Then after 71, it is 72. So the, this yellow line comes here after 57 and 72. It is a li little bit complicated, so we uh, get it to another place. Look at the blue color, 89, 90, 91. The other numbers are here up to 103. Then after 99 and 104, this part is moving to there. 104 up to here. The biggest element is 118. Atomic number is 118. So this is little bit complicated, but science and chemistry, do you know if science and chemistry, you know, you have some idea about this periodic table. Then we are moving to next. This is the reason the gemstones give colors. So you have to learn this. Look at the proper periodic table here now. First column, sec second column is here. Third column, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth. Eighth column is one family. Second column also one family. First column also one family. Third column also one family. The yellow, these three and these are the same family, the bluish one, this one and this family is coming here. Now I need to mention this gray color area only. Gray color, titanium, vanadium, chromium, manganese, iron, cobalt, nickel, copper, zinc, zirconium, namibium, molybdenum, you know some. 
all are the elements in this world. The maximum number is 118. That means 118 elements are prevailing in this world. This world creates under the chemistry with the two or more elements joined together. So this is the basic thing. So 118 are there. Out of these 118 elements, 22, 23, 24, this gray color part is responsible for the color of the gem. And not only the color of the gem and the Bunsen burner's color, giving color of the uh, heat, heated flame, flame color also changing. So I need to mention about this. These elements are responsible for the given colors through the gems. So now you need to understand this one only. Okay, we are moving to next. This is the part I, I told. The other areas I gave black. This is the part we need to understand. These elements are responsible for the changing colors with the spectrum. We can see 340 up to 700 nanometers range. That is called visible color range. So in this visible color range, some gemstones are absorbing some color and giving a black line called absorption spectra. So these elements, very small, very, very small amount of these elements are included inside the aluminum oxide lattice or inside the lattice of the gemstone. It is very, very small amount. It gives the special color to the gemstone. This is the thing I need to uh, teach you today. Now this is visible light range, 340 up to 700 nanometers. We are moving to the next. Now you can understand here, titanium, you know the titanium and the cobalt, titanium and cobalt gives blue color. Titanium this one, cobalt this one, titanium and cobalt, titanium lonely give blue color, cobalt lonely give blue color. So blue color gives with this titanium or cobalt, so it is blue color. Then the reason is this titanium, this uh, gray color area elements are consists of big uh, space of the electrons. They have no satisfaction with electrons. They need more electrons to balance. So they are working like color agent. Sometimes they are working like color agent. They are giving blue color. Titanium gives blue color. When we are burning gouda or treating something, then the titanium inside the stone, a uh, uh, very small amount of titanium changes this, its colors. Because from the sunlight, it absorbs titanium, absorbs everything and gives the blue color through the C axis. And the cobalt also, spinel, cobalt spinel, it gives this color. So remember, titanium or cobalt gives blue color to any gemstone. Then the next thing is chromium. Chromium is this one. This one, CR. Then chromium gives, if it is aluminum oxide lattice, it gives red color. Then it calls ruby. If it is beryl family, it gives a green color. The same element gives red color inside the aluminum oxide lattice and in the beryl lattice it gives green color. So chromium gives green for emerald 
and red for ruby ruby or pink sapphire any sapphire with chromium gives red or reddish color if it is pure red it calls ruby now we are moving to this color you can see what is this color greenish bluish green greenish blue or bluish green with gray color it is given by the copper this color gives by copper copper then remember chromium gives red to ruby and green to emerald titanium or cobalt gives blue then aluminum oxide this is ruby it is giving red color because of the chromium chromium ingredient right aluminum oxide this is blue sapphire iron and titanium is there iron and titanium both are joined together and changing ions electron to titanium and the titanium then gives the blue color iron is there as ferrous fe2 plus then that iron gives one electron to titanium and iron becomes ferric fe3 plus and the titanium becomes ti2 plus then the both of them join together and move into inside moving inside the lattice spaces and titanium sends blue color through the uh, c axis of the stone so iron is not giving the blue color titanium gives after iron gives the single electron to titanium this is uh, discussed this this is discussed in uh, gave the 15 lessons are there from 90 to 104 inside that it it was there right now you know aluminum oxide lattice gives blue with the titanium aluminum oxide lattice gives red or pink color with the chromium in this one basically spectroscope how to work with spectroscope is mentioning here and the lesson also earlier you saw it and prism spectros spectroscope is one the view is here the diffraction grating spectroscope is here only little bit difference there but the prism spectroscope shorter view and this one is giving the low longer view basically it works like this white light comes through here and it will break to the colors when we see this through this spectroscope the gemstone here when we watching from here through this light we can see the absorption spectra if it is peridot these are the absorption parts and if it is a ruby these are the black lines we can see blue area and here red area so we learned earlier also we are moving to next this is polariscope we use this polariscope to check the double refractive or single refractive stone this is the hole to set the light here or inside light there then the stone is placing here or we can place with this holder in between these two these two places then when we rotating the stone or this ip is these are the angles we can see if it is a oval shaped stone if we turn 180 degrees not 180 360 degrees that means one round we can get the oval this way after 45 angle this one then another 45 gives this decision this direction another 45 degrees another 45 another 
another 45, another 45. Then one round is finished. When we rotate one round, we can see always the through the stone, always light is passing. Then we can see this one. When we see this one, <clears throat> light is not passing through the stone. So we can see the stone as black. When we see this, after 45 degrees, we can see no light. Earlier, light is there. Another 45 degrees rotation gives light again through the stone. Another 45 degrees, no light. That means this way, this, this status two, this status is 90 degrees. Another 90 degrees, no light. Another 90 degrees, no light. First of all, light is moving through the stone. After 90 degrees, light is moving, going through. Another 90 degrees turn, light, light is moving. Another 90 degrees moving. So, with one rotation of the stone, there are four times they are changing. Light moves, no light. Light, no light. Light, no light. This is called double resective. We can check this with this polariscope or the spinal card, that means double card, or you can see this directly with the pleochroism. The word vacuum, pleochroism. If you can check the pleochroism by your eye, you can see this properly. It is double resective. Sometimes we, you can see like this. It is analogous DR. It is not double reflective. Lot of people get the mistake from this. This is not double reflective. Spinal and garnet shows like this maybe. If it is this way, we can see the polariscope through or the uh, double card. It is single reflective stone. Double means this. Properly, light goes through, light, dark, no light. That is automatic bulb, light, automatic bulb, blowing and stopping. Four times with one rotation. This is the double reflective. Right. We are moving. Here, all are red stones, ruby, garnet, spinner, all are red. But you know, ruby gives red color because of chromium. See, garnet, mother stone and the uh, garnet stones, crystals, spinel. Look at the shape of the spinel crystal, spinel. Then let's learn how to identify rubies in the next lesson. Lesson number 68, L68, gives identification of rubies. So, how we identify rubies comes with lesson number 68. Always follow the lesson number. Write down the summary note for studying later. We are moving. We are joining together again with next lesson.